Welcome to Briars Music Showcase. I'm Briars Cisneros and welcome back to another video. So after what, like two weeks of no real videos aside from that Rolling Stones unboxing I did, um, I'm finally back and we're back to my usual setup. So again, after like weeks of school, work and other miscellaneous things, I thought it would be kind of nice to take a little mini break from video making. Uh, but of course, I am back once again, and what better way to come back with is my monthly CD haul, where I go through every CD that I bought throughout the month. And of course, we're talking about October, and another very special thing about this day is that by the time this video comes out, it is Halloween, so hopefully you're going to have a good Halloween for you. Of course, this, this is going to come out in the morning, so hopefully you have a good evening. Uh, so, just want to get festive. As you can see, I got some decorations back up. You can kind of see the background just a little bit, just some tiny things. And of course, I gotta wear a costume, so I gotta take off the hat and here we go. Meow meow. I had a different costume in mind, but when it came, it was too small, so I had to return it. And this is the best I could do. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's cat themed, and plus, I got whiskers growing right now, so it works. So, I'm gonna wear this the entire video. And I'm committed to this. Anyhow, so let's get started. So, we have a total of 36 CDs to get through. So, not as big as prior months, but still a good amount. And I think Mickey guessed that I was going to get about like 31, if I'm not mistaken. 31, 32, somewhere around there. So, it was pretty close. Uh, so, I have this kind of divided into sections. So, this first First batch I'm going to go through are CDs that were given to me. So I did not buy these with my own money. People have given personally given them to me. And of course, I'm going to thank them. So the first few I'm going to talk about is by Mickey himself. So I did a video where I unboxed his latest, uh, well, his latest uh, package he sent me. I'll, there's a there's the thumbnail right there. You can go ahead and find it yourself. And I might, and I'll probably leave a link to that in the description. All right, so first thing that I'm going to show is a live album Mickey sent me. He actually sent me two, or actually maybe three. So we have Rush, Working Men. So this came out in 2009. I think this was supposed to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the band, which you can kind of see a little sign right there, R30. So that kind of tells you. Um, comes in a nice little standard digi pack. And the CD looks like a manhole cover, which is kind of interesting. I mean, this pretty much has most of the songs you want to hear. Uh, it has Limelight, Spirit of Radio, 2112. Of course, not the whole 2112, just the Overture and Temple of Syrix mainly. Uh, Dreamline, Far Cry, uh, Subdivisions, uh, One Little Victory, Close to the Heart, Tom Sawyer, Working Man, and closes out with YYZ or YYZ. Um, yeah. Very good live album. Of course, the band the band is is just incredible. Um, Getty sounds pretty good at this time as well. I mean, musicianship just goes without saying. Uh, so yeah, pretty good live album. Very enjoyable, especially if you're a Rush fan. Okay, another live album Mickey sent was this Deep Purple live album, and this is live at the Olympia, '96. So of course, recorded in, at in '96, um, hence the title and at the Olympia. So this is with Steve Morse in the band, and I believe, yeah, John Lord should, is still in the band. Uh, it's a two CD set. So there's disc one, and there's disc two. It's kind of nice that they come in different colors. So, yeah, again, pretty good, especially during this time. I think Ian Gillen still, still sounds very nice. I mean, by this point, his he's not really shrieking like he used to when he was a bit younger, uh, but still, I think he, he sings very nice, and again, the rest of the band sounds really good. Um, let's see, just just looking at certain things. Um, yeah, so let me just quickly go through the track listing to this. Uh, so disc one has Fireball, Baby I'm a Leo, Ted the Mechanic, Pictures of Home, Black, Black Knight, uh, Cascade, I'm Not Your Lover, Sometimes I Feel Like Screaming, Woman from Tokyo, No One Came, 
the, the perpendicular waltz. And then disc two has Rosa's Cantina, Smoke on the Water, When a Blind Man Cries, Speed King, Perfect Strangers, Hey Cinco, and it closes out with Highway Star, which is kind of interesting because when I think Deep Purple, usually Highway Star opens the CD. So it's kind of interesting. But still, very good live album, especially if you're a Deep Purple fan. Now this one, I'm not sure if it's a live album or it says Concert Classics Volume 7. So I can't tell if this is an actual live album or a compilation of live cuts. Um, yeah, but this is from a band I have never heard of called Head East. So 15 songs and they're all live. Um, all the members of the band are actually listed up there. So that, that's kind of interesting. And I, the back cover is kind of interesting, kind of them eating at a diner. Very Super Tramp-esque, I must say. Uh, but the band themselves, they, they're they pretty much a pretty solid, I guess, 70s. I guess a lot of these were taken from the 70s, maybe. Uh, just a solid rock, pop, rock, I guess you can say kind of a pop rock, power pop rock, power pop or something, uh, hard rock sort of thing. Some solid stuff. I can't really say much because, you know, nothing really there's nothing really st that stands out about them but you know some solid stuff let me know your thoughts of this band if you've heard of them um yeah it's, it's not too bad all right now mickey also sent me two elton john cds so we have fire no ice on fire this is from 85 i i believe and he also sent me made in england from 95 so 10 years apart Kind of, kind of, kind of, that's kind of cool. Um, so starting with this one. So again, this is one of his 80s albums and most people would say they they definitely aren't his strongest stuff. Um, there were a few songs I, I, I knew. I, I knew Nikita because that was on the Greatest Hits compilation. So I knew that one already, but I think everything else was pretty new. Um, this Town was pretty solid. Cry to Heaven, I think I liked. Um, Too Young, uh, I think Wrap It Up. I believe George Michael sings guests on wrap it up if i'm not mistaken let me double check it should tell me um hopefully uh -huh. let's see um yeah it says george michael does guess but let me just see if that tells you i don't think it actually tells you yeah um hold on I, I i'll get to it yeah yeah i was right wrap it up george michael Okay, and I believe there's other, like a couple more guests on here, but I'm kind of, kind of forgetting them at the moment. But yeah, still kind of nice, interesting. So overall, it's a, it's a decent album. Again, not one of his better ones, but you know, there's some songs that I kind of liked. This one I think I liked a little bit better. Of course, this one's from one of his '90s albums, and I think it's pretty solid. Um, believe. Uh, Made in England, um, Pain, uh, Blessed, which of course, it's funny that all, pretty much every song is only one word except the title track. You know, kind of wish you kind of stick to, stuck to the theme there. Um, but you know, again, some solid stuff. Again, nothing to really write home about, but you know, for, for 90s Elton John, you know, pretty solid. All right, next, we got another Uriah Heap album from Mickey. We have Fallen Angel. This was from 78, I think. So this is during the John Lawton era. Of course, John Lawton don't, kind of got to start here. Uh, you still have K Ken Hensley here. Let me just see the whole band listing. Um, you still have Mick Box on guitars. Uh, Trevor Bolden on bass. Ken Hensley on keyboard, synthesizers, acoustic guitars, and other backing vocals. Um, then you have Lee Cares Lake on drums. So, again, I think I mentioned this in the unboxing video, but it's kind of weird. It purposely just leaves out John Lawton, even though he's clearly on the back cover, on the back there. Um, so it's kind of that's kind of a weird thing. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Um, but yeah. So again some really good stuff again not like 
it's not like cream of the crop Uri heap but you know pretty solid for for what it is um women of the night kind of nice um falling in love um the title track come back to me um i'm alive Again, some solid stuff. I mean, kind of a bit more commercial sounding. Um, by this, of course, by this point, you know, people, bands are kind of moving away from their hard, from more harder rock into more uh, commercial sounding stuff. Uh, but no, it's not a bad thing, I don't think. And yeah, it's solid. I, if I were to rank them, probably wouldn't be too high, but I wouldn't say it's a bad album. All right, okay, now Mickey sent me this. He sent me a Who album, and we have The Endless Wire. Okay, so pretty interesting. I know most Who fans don't really rank this very highly. Um, Cause you know, no, by this point, John N. Whistle had already passed away, so he's not on this album. And I think Pete does a lot of the uh, instruments on here. Um, so what are my thoughts on this um overall um not too bad I, it's not bad it's not terrible um i definitely there's definitely some standout moments and i think uh roger still sounds pretty good um and pete also sings a bit and he sounds okay too um definitely you can you can tell pete's voice has definitely gotten has definitely aged uh definitely you can feel the age definitely not as smooth as when he was younger uh, but you know, not too bad. Um, music wise, again, solid, very solid, um, solid playing for the most part. Um, so let's see. Um, the disc one is disc one is the entire album. It actually comes with a, I believe it's, it's, it's on one disc, but it's divided to halves. So tracks one through nine are the standalone songs. And then, uh, 10 through 21, actually 10 through 19, technically, because uh, it does come with bonus stuff. Uh, 10 through 19 uh, is kind of a mini opera called Wire and Glass. So kind of interesting that they're, that Pete still wanted to do a, a little mini opera here as well. Again, can't really top uh, Tommy and Quadrophenia, but it's kind of interesting that he brought brought this whole thing back. Um, that's, so yeah. Of course, Disc 2 is supposed to be the Alive concert, but... Uh, that thing's missing uh so that that's okay uh, actually actually it does come actually never mind it does come with it does come with the live disc um it was missing the dvd of the live concert that's what was missing uh but yeah again definitely not one of my favorites but you know it's not, it's not bad not bad okay now this one we have John and Yoko, Plastic Ono Band, Sometime in New York City. I'm just going to be real. This is probably my least favorite of this entire haul, actually. <laughs> this is my least favorite out of all the seeds I'm going to show today. Uh, yeah, you know, by this point, he had, John had released Plastic Ono Band and Imagine. So by the time we got to this, I think many people could agree. By this point, John was... In terms of his like protest phase, people this is by this is the point where people were like, okay, John, we get it. You can calm down now. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I've heard worse, but again, the problem with this album is not so much the lyrics, but well, well, okay, maybe a little bit, but music-wise, it just doesn't really interest me. And you know, I'm pretty, you know, with John's stuff was decent. And you know, I'm, and I've, I've said in the past, I don't I don't hate a lot of Yoko's contributions. But yeah, on this album, yeah, Yoko's stuff definitely weren't, didn't really interest me either. Um, of course, this had a big hit on here and I can't say the title because it has a word that I am not allowed to say. Or else either one, I'll get, I'll get, this channel will get taken down. Or, or a certain group of people will, will come after me. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of weird talking about that. Um, so, I could talk about the track listing, but, eh, again, not worth it. Uh, disc 2, or 
because this was a double album, I believe, and this had a live cut, the live concert, and even the live stuff was kind of controversial because I know one of the songs they took from Frank Zappa, but they didn't credit him, um, so that was a whole thing. Um, but yeah, eh, not really that. It's not that good. <laughs> And then one more thing Mickey sent me was this. This was kind of interesting. This is the Arts of McCartney. Now this is kind of like a compilation disc and it basically has a bunch of people, a bunch of musicians gathering around and just, excuse me, covering a bunch of Paul McCartney songs, both solo and Beatles. Excuse me, God, it's, it's morning. I don't know why. Uh, so, pretty interesting. If you're a McCartney fan, then maybe give this a listen. Definitely an interesting curiosity because you have a ton of people on here. There's like, disc one has 17 songs, disc two has, has 19, and it even comes with a bonus DVD too that talks about the making of it. So yeah, tons of stuff on here. Um, Billy Joel, maybe I'm amazed, um, some pr does a solid job on it. Um, Hart does Band on the Run. Of course, Ann Wilson does a really good job on that track, I think. Um, I mean, you know, before I continue, like, I will say, like, the th all the covers on here, they play pretty straight. They don't really deviate too much from the original. Um, so, if that if you're into that, then you'll probably enjoy it. Um, let's see, um, uh, Yusuf or Cat Stevens does a cover of The Long and Winding Road, which not too bad. Um, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys does Wanderlust. Um, kind of interesting. Of course, Brian Wilson's voice definitely aged, so take that for what you will. Uh, Willie Nelson sings Yesterday. Um, I, I can see that. Yeah, I, I can see why they fit. Uh, Jeff Lynn sings Junk. Uh, Barry Gibb does When I'm 64. Uh, Paul Rogers of Bad Company did Let Me Roll It. Then you have Roger Daltrey doing Helter Skelter. And yeah, you know, pretty good fit, I must say. Uh, especially if you know history of The Who and The Beatles. Uh, that's the whole thing. Um, see, The Cure does Hello Goodbye. Uh, Billy Joel does Live and Let Die. Uh, probably one of my favorites was Robin Zanders of Cheap Trick uh, doing Jet. I think that, that, that was a perfect match for his voice. Um, you know, Chrissy Hines of The Pretenders sings Let It Be, and that's my favorite Beatles song. And again, it's fine. <laughs> Definitely, it wasn't, but yeah, it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't really up my alley. Probably the strangest one here is El was Alice Cooper singing Eleanor Rigby. That was probably the one I was kind of kind of anticipating because I wanted to hear like how the heck does that work. It sort of works, I guess, but again, I just can't shake the image of Alice Cooper singing Eleanor Rigby. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just that this, this is it's not computing. Uh, again, he doesn't sound bad, but again, I just can't shake. I just can't make that disconnect. Uh, but Again, take that for what you will. Uh, they even include Come and Get It, which was a Bad Fingers song, but Paul wrote it for them, so that's kind of interesting that they included that song here. Uh, but overall, it's, it's interesting. I wouldn't say I'll listen to this very often, but as a little curiosity piece, then maybe go seek it out if you're curious, especially with all the, all the people here. All right, next, let's go talk about... Uh, by the way, that's all the CDs that uh, Mickey got for me so again Mickey if you're watching this thank you very much um, he did he did send me a blue oyster cult greatest hits but I didn't include it because for the most part I knew all the songs already there were probably like one or two I d weren't familiar with but I want to say that when I get the actual album they were on so again Mickey thank you very much all right so this one this next one was actually given to me by Garrett who also sent me that police album that you can see behind me um, so again, this was for this was a birthday present, by the way, and yeah, this is another one from the Who. We have Odds and Sods. So this is a compilation disc that has a lot of unreleased material. Some of the, some of the songs were originally supposed to be on Life House, the abandoned Life House, but or hopefully you know the history of that. And yeah, pretty good compilation. 
some really nice songs. It's not the first time I've heard this um, postcard. Nice, good way to open it. Now I'm a farmer. A uh, little Billy, pretty nice. Pure and easy. Um, Naked Eye. This is kind of solid. Uh, Long Live Rock. Gold gl uh, Glow Girl. Uh, yeah, just a nice compilation. So yeah, pretty good. So again, Garrett, or yeah, Garrett, thank you very much. All right, next up. Now this one was given to me by Jason, the old millennial. And this was also a birthday present earlier this month. And he also, he, so this is, so he sent me uh, Alapalooza by Weird Al earlier, but I talked about that in the last CD haul, but this one came a little bit after. Uh, so we have a Christmas album. It's Christmas in, in October. Um, yeah, uh, makes sense, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas exists, so it works. So this is called Bare Naked for the Holidays by Bare Naked Ladies. So this is now my second Bare Naked Ladies related album I have in my collection. And yeah, it's a Christmas album. I did do a little bit of research. This was kind of, I, I, I want to say it was a con it was a contract thing. They needed, they needed another album to release. Um, so they ha had to quickly make this. And, you know, it's a fun album, you know. You know, bare naked, bare naked ladies definitely have a very, uh, they have a very comedic edge to them. Uh, very nerdy. <laughs> it's funny when you go on Wikipedia, they're labeled as geek rock, which I think is pretty fitting. Uh, so yeah, you have a bunch of holiday songs. Some of the songs that are pretty well known. Of course, you have Jingle Bells. Uh, do you know, do they know it's Christmas? Uh, Sleigh Ride. But there's some original songs here as well, which is kind of interesting, which is kind of nice. Again. It's a very fun album. Um, definitely gets you in the holiday spirit if you want something a bit more lighthearted. I mean, most Christmas Christmas music is lighthearted, but if you want something even that goes a bit further than that, then yeah, definitely give this a listen. All right, so that is all the CDs that were given to me by other people. So again, to those people who sent me those CDs, thank you very much. Okay, so now we are moving into the next segment. And these are all the CDs that I bought with my own money. Alright, so we have a lot more of these. So I'm going to try and get through this quickly because this video is already getting a pretty, because it's pretty long already. Uh, I mean, that's like most of my CD hauls. Anyhow, let's start off pretty simple. We have a Greatest Hits. We have the Human League. So again, the Human League, pretty, pretty influential in terms of synth pop and new wave. Uh, of course, I'm sure most of you won't know them for that one big hit, uh, Don't You Want Me Baby. Um, don't, yeah, Don't You Want Me. God, sorry, I'm stuffed up right now. Uh, but, you know, I just thought I'd get like a little bit of Human League. I don't know if I'll get any of their full albums, but, you know, they made some, a couple nice songs. Like, I mean, the real reason I got this was because I wanted to get Don't You Want Me, and I also wanted Human. That's, I think that's another good song by them. Uh, but yeah, it's it's synth pop. It's synth pop. Not much to say about it. But you know, if you like synth pop, you might want to take a look at this. All right. Up next, we have Nick Drake, Five Leaves Left. So I now officially have every Nick Drake album. He only released three before he died. Um, so yeah, this is his first album. Came out in 1969. If I'm not mistaken, 68, 68 or 69, somewhere around there. And yeah, very solid debut. Um, kind of folky singer-songwriter. Um, there's some strings on here, I think, which was kind of kind of nice. Um, so yeah, very solid debut. Um, I mean, Nick Drake definitely has a very unique voice. Um, can't, it's hard to describe it, but definitely, definitely stands out once you hear it. Uh, but yeah, it's just nothing too crazy. Just him mostly on guitar, back with the band. And yeah, very nice. I do like it. And I do like the green cover. I like green, so that's gonna do that's gonna do it for me. Alright, up next, we got another Santana album, and we got Santana 3. Very interesting cover, by the way. 
So this came out in 71, I believe. And this one's pretty notable because I think I believe this is the first album to feature Neil Sean, who of course would later form Journey. Uh, he's played he's one of the guitarists here. And all, right, right off the bat, you, when you hear Neil Sean, you know it's him. And he's killing it on this album. Some really great lead playing and soloing. And funny enough, he was still a teenager by this point. So that's pretty that's pretty that puts me to shame uh but anyhow uh but yeah just some great stuff again if you like santana you know what you're expecting good bits of latin rock a bit of bit of jazz fusion uh and yeah and the guitar playing again by both San by both carlos and neil just really great pairing um again it's mainly there's mostly instrumentals but you occasionally get the vocals in here and yeah just some great stuff on here so yeah give this a give this a listen if you haven't already all right let's dip back into progressive rock we have Eloy power and the passion of course very nice I do like the cover by the way I like the landscape photo and of course they have a nice logo too so for those who don't know Eloy they are a German uh, progressive rock band um, a little bit of space rock too and and yeah again some great stuff I, I've always enjoyed what I've heard from Eloy um, musicianship wise is pretty pretty good um, vocally wise it's probably going to be a hit or miss for people because let's be real the, the lead singer doesn't have the greatest voice but you know he you know he does his job um, so this is a concept album and it does tell a story about uh, a, a, like a this guy who goes back in time um he s smokes a joint in like like uh medieval like almost medieval france and he gets arrested for it and so he has to try and get out of it interesting story um but you know again very good musicianship i really i really enjoyed this album quite a bit so yeah i'd say i'd recommend it if you're curious especially that story i just described uh but yeah now we go on to some Stevie Wonder. We have Talking Book. Classic album. Of course, this was during his classic run of albums in the 70s. Of course, the big hit here is Superstition. Of course, who has not heard Superstition? Uh, other great songs like You Are Sh the Sh Sunshine of My Life, You and I, uh, Big Brother, um, I believe. Uh, Tuesday Heartbreak is pretty good too. So, I mean, so far, pretty much all these Stevie Wonder albums I've been getting recently have just been top to bottom great albums like not one bad song i would say so yeah definitely a classic okay we got more progressive rock we have renaissance been a bit since we've talked about renaissance okay so i'm gonna try and pronounce this i really should have looked up how to pronounce it before i recorded this video but i digress we have Skins her, skins her a and other stories. Okay, I try, I tried. Okay, uh, so Renaissance again, very underrated progressive rock band. They have a female vo vocalist, um, Annie Haslam's name. Always love that her voice. Definitely has a great range to it, and the mu music again take influence by a lot of classical, classical influence. Um, progressive rock bit of jazz all that sort of thing very good stuff um only four songs on this album so and again all the, all the songs are just great i mean trip of trip to the fair 10 minute song but love great opening song disc two the vultures fly high definitely the more commercial sounding song like the more uh, accessible song because it's only like three minutes um, they have ocean gypsy another really good song and then it closes out with the 24 minute epic the title track song of that word I tried to pronounce earlier uh, yeah really good stuff I see most people rank this as number one um, I think I still prefer turn of the cards but still really good stuff all right, these next two are by the same band. So we have, so the band is Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. So these two I got, we have uh, Rufus Sized from 1974. And I also got uh, their self-titled album from 75. 
it's not the debut by the way uh but yeah of course featuring shaka khan there she is there and there she is again right there um so of course this is the band where she got her start in before she went solo and i mean yeah some really great funk r&b soul music um bit of funk rock too um yeah it's just really great playing and of course shaka khan really great vocals on here i mean she's killing it by this point and you can tell she's gonna go she's gonna hit it big uh just by hearing her voice just big um great range excuse me and yeah some good stuff like i definitely would want to check out some more by this band so i've really enjoyed them like i think both these albums are very strong i think i slightly prefer this one over this one but again they're pretty close i can't i can't really pick it i can't really pick it even though i literally just picked this one earlier but oh well all right next so this is by the birds and i will say i now would say i officially have every bird studio album um so we have the reunion album from 73 simply called birds of course me and nick over on townsend 909 channel uh we reviewed the entire birds discography and we we, we did every album um and the only like we also reviewed like like a demo album uh pre-flight which has a lot of stuff that were recorded before their debut um I'm not sure if I'll get that one, but maybe at some point, maybe, but not in a rush. But I now have all the mainline studio albums by the band, so that's kind of I'm kind of happy about that. So I think I'm just going to briefly recap what I said in our review. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you are curious. I even have a playlist of our series, um, and yeah, solid album, really good. Um, for a reunion album, I think they did. This, there was some. It's done really well. Produced by David Crosby. Um, some solid songs on here. A couple covers. You have a couple Neil Neil Young songs and one Joni Mitchell song, which I think they do pretty well. And the rest of the rest of the songs are also pretty good as well. Um, is it one of their best? Probably not, but solid. And I think it's a solid album to, that they kind of closed out with to kind of bring it full circle. That's the name of the first song on here. Uh, but yeah, it's some nice stuff. Speaking of David Crosby, okay, I know Jason's gonna like this one because when I did my 70s series and when, when I was talking about 1975, he actually brought this album up in his comment. We have Crosby and Nash, Wind on the Water. So, of course, it's just David and Graham here. So, yeah, pretty good. This was definitely really good. Um, really enjoy this one, Carry Me, Mama Lion, uh, Bittersweet, um, Love Workout. Probably my, probably my favorite song on here is Track 10, Field Worker. I think that's a, I've always really, that's a really good song. I really enjoy that one. Um, um, they have 11, the Track 11 to the Last Whale, which is divided into two parts. You have Critical Mass and Wind on the Water. Uh, but yeah, very, very good album very enjoyable i mean if you love david crosby and graham nash this is definitely going to be up your alley so yeah very good stuff up next we got blondie of course this is a big one of their big albums we have parallel lines there's debbie harry on the back right there there's debbie harry right let me just look at the name so i make sure i don't confuse my female vocalists mixed up uh Yeah, Debbie Harry. It's, I mean, it says Deborah, but close enough. Most people say Debbie for short. Anyhow, but yeah, I just been wanting to get Blondie for a long time now, but I kept putting it off. But finally got it on, got one album on CD. Of course, this is a huge album for them. Of course, you have big hits like One Way or Another. Um, then you have, of course, Heart of Glass, which is a terrific song. But yeah, the rest of the album some really great catchy very good melodic rock well not melodic but, but you know it, it rocks but basically uh hang on the telephone picture this uh i know but i don't know uh sunday girl 
uh, just go away. Yeah, fun album. It's a very fun album. A good precursor to to both uh, synth pop, synth synth rock and even even of course new wave probably. So great stuff. Hearts, Baby Lestrange. So this came out in 1980. Okay, very good album as well. Again, of course they had by this point they haven't gone commercial yet. Uh, definitely still has their hard rock roots intact. And yeah, some great stuff here. The title track, Silver Wheels, Even It Up, Strange Night, Sweet Darling, just to name a few songs. So more great stuff. All right. And I even got more ABBA too. So I now have three uh, studio albums by ABBA. We have The Visitors which of course was their final studio album for decades until they would release Voyage not a couple years ago. Uh, but yeah, if this would have been the final ABBA album, I thought that, I, I would have thought this would, would have been a good way to close out. Um, again, some nice songs on here. Uh, the, the title track, uh, When All of a Sudden Dud is a great song. I love, love that one. Uh, one of Us, uh, see slipping through my fingers a nice kind of ballad type of song um and then i do I'll, i do want to bring up this one does have some bonus songs and that should include some of the singles that weren't on the album um this comes with should i laugh or cry uh the day before you came um cassandra and then it closes out with under attack which if i remember correctly that was the last single they released before they broke up um and i think that's a good song too so yeah, again, I love ABBA, what are you going to do? <laughs> All right, now let's go back to some more progressive rock. We have Marillion, script from a jester's tear. All right, so yeah, so now I officially have every uh, studio album from, from the Fish era of this band. Of course, Fish is the lead singer. Very Peter Gabriel esque vocal style, even on this album, it's very, it's very Peter Gabriel influenced. Uh, but yeah, great debut, I must say. Um, some great stuff. I mean, six songs in total, they're pretty long, but again, the playing, the, the vocals, just a very solid debut, really. Um, I pretty much enjoyed every song basically there wasn't a song that I was like yeah I'm kind of bored kind of boring uh, but yeah some good stuff yeah all right now let's go back to some more pop some 80s pop we have Cindy Lauper she's so unusual her debut yeah I wanted to get this album for quite some time too it has some great hits on here like of course, the big hit, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, which was a cover, by the way, from a punk band. Some, like a pop punk sort of thing. Uh, kind of interesting. Or new wave band. Kind of interesting. Um, um, see, of course, Time After Time, probably my favorite song on here. Uh, she Bop, which is, you know, about certain activities. <laughs> uh, private activities, I must say. <laughs> um, let's see. Some other songs I really enjoyed were Money Changes Everything. Um, I also want to shout out her cover of Prince's When You Were Mine. I actually might think, I, th I might prefer her version than Prince's version, surprisingly. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the song, it's just good old fun pop music. Not really much to say, but it's just fun. All right, next, we have to uh, Tori Amos, Under the Pink. So I believe, I believe, I think it was Tom who sent me a Tori Amos CD a while ago, um, and I really enjoyed that album. So I thought, why not give, why not try this album out? This is her second album. I believe the one, other one I have is her debut. So I decided to get this one, and solid. It's pretty solid. I would say I, I think I prefer the debut over this because uh, this one's a bit slower. Because there's definitely moments where it kind of it's mostly piano mainly piano based and there are some moments where it does pick up there's more energy uh, but yeah it kind of kind of plays around with okay starting off kind of easy then going back up then going back down and it's kind of going this roller coaster um yeah overall i can't really say much about it but it's, it's pretty good i did like it i don't love it though 
Okay, now this one was kind of interesting. We have Lynch Mob, and this is their self-titled album. Not their debut, I believe this is their second album. Of course, what's notable about this band, this was George Lynch's band. Um, so George Lynch form of, of Dokken, um, 80s, 80s hair metal band, by the way. Um, so this is the band he created when he left Dokken, I believe. Um, so, and yeah, this was, this one came out in the nine, in the early 90s, 92, from the sounds of it. And I know it didn't sell that, didn't sell a whole, like the debut did pretty well. Um, this album didn't do as well because it's 92, grunge was starting to become a big thing and they definitely sounded a bit behind the times. Um, but you know, some solid stuff. I mean, George Lynch's guitar playing goes without saying, it's really great. I'll say the vocals are probably the weakest thing about the album. It's definitely a bit generic for my liking. Uh, kind of your typical hair metal vocalist, but other than that, some solid stuff. Again, probably not one of my favorites out of this whole batch. Okay, next up, we I did get some more Weird Al. We have Off the Deep End. Of course, you can tell by the album cover, definitely making fun of, Nir not making fun, but kind of poking fun of the Nevermind cover. Uh, of course, this is notable for having Smells Like Nirvana, which was a huge hit. Um, that's where Nirvana knew they got big when Weird Al parodied th their song. Um, and then from here you have songs like Trigger Happy, which is a Beach Boys kind of tribute. Um, I Can't Watch This, which is an MC Hammer cover, which is just basically TV. Uh, yeah, you have your typical polka thing, which, you know, you know, it's kind of fun, but, you know, nothing, nothing I would go back too often. Uh, the White Stuff, which is talking about the middle of the Oreo, the cream part, which I relate to. Uh, when I Was Your Age... Um, the plumbing song and then you have you don't love me anymore which is a nice little ballad which is an original by weird al not a parody um but of course it has a little hidden track again it's kind of poking fun of nirvana's album which has that hidden track that most people don't like talking about uh but yeah again if you like weird al you're always gonna have some fun times okay we're almost there just a few more to go let me see how long we've been recording. Oh, 20 minutes. Jesus, this is going to be a long video. Uh, from here, next up, Deep Purple. Again, more Deep Purple. We have Woosh. This is actually their, probably their latest album. They they released a cover album, but uh, most people don't count it. Uh, but yeah, this came out in 2020. So yeah. Uh, for a late period album from a, le from a legacy band, I think this is pretty good. I think playing on here is still very solid uh throw it my bones drop the weapon nothing at all um let's see the long way round um power of the moon um even comes with a bonus track uh which was pretty solid too um it, it also includes a cover of their of and the address which was off their debut kind of a weird choice I don't know if they want. I don't know if they wanted to just bring it full circle to reference the debut album from during the Rod Evans period. Um, I don't know how to feel about that one. Kind of a weird way to close out the album, but you know, regardless, pretty good. I really enjoy this one. All right, now this is going to be surprising to some people, but I have a modern pop album, and we have The Weeknd. This is called, what is this called again? I forgot what it's called. I know, does this have a name? After After Hours. That's what it's called. It says so on the disc. All right, yeah. Just, I definitely want to check out more modern music for a change. And The Weeknd was something I was kind of interested in because I have heard a couple of his singles and I've always kind of liked his voice. Very nice. Uh, of course I knew, probably the biggest song in here was Blinding Lights, which I knew and I've always, Kind of like that one. I'm trying to find the track listing. Uh, I guess there's no track listing on here. So sadly, I cannot tell you some other songs that I liked off the top of my head, at least. Uh, but I will say I really enjoy the album. Uh, very great. I mean, are kind of an R&B sort of thing. Um, R&B pop. Um, uh, just some great, and again, his vocals sound really nice. Um, some good, kind of harkening back to almost the 80s a little bit. Definitely has an 80s feel to it, which definitely appeals to me. 
Um, and I know I'm doing some research, this lyrically deals with some very, very serious topics like depression, loneliness, um, that sort of thing. Um, but regardless, like still, I was, I, I was pretty, pretty, I was pretty surprised. I, I I liked this way more than I probably should have, but still, I'm not complaining about it though. So yeah, that's the weekend. All right, so now we have some sparks. We have number one in heaven. Of course, this is their '79 album, and this was kind of notable because they kind of was going in a more disco approach. Uh, of course, they were they hooked up with the producer who produced some of Donna Summer's songs, and you got this six. And you got this like there's only six songs on here, uh, but pretty interesting. Um, definitely, a, most people cite this album as a pioneer of like dance of dance music. Uh, dance, uh, uh, see what else, pop, uh, synth pop, new wave again. Uh, so definitely an interesting album. I mean, Sparks were always interesting, but this is always kind of nice. You have songs like Tryouts for the Human Race, um, Academy Award per per Performance, Beat the Clock, which was a single. And then you have the title song, which is again, very good song. That was actually one of the first Sparks songs I heard, and I always enjoyed that one. So yeah, it comes in a little, little digi pack as well. Okay, just got four more to go. Okay, still, still pretty solid on time. All right, next up, we have the Kinks once again, and we have something else by the Kinks, and it's something else by the Kinks. So yeah, definitely want to get some more Kinks in the collection. And I know, and I know Nick is a pretty big Kinks fan, and he always talks about this one. So this was definitely a good one to get. Um, yeah. Very good album, yeah. I've always enjoyed what I've heard from the Kinks so far. This is my fourth Kinks album I have in the collection now. Um, David Watts, really good track. Death of a Clown, which was a Davy, which was a uh, Dave Davy song. Um, um, I said I almost said Davy Jones earlier, so that's all these Daves. I tell you, uh, Two Sisters, uh, Ten Soldier Man. Um, let's see what else, old. Uh, Lazy Old Sun, Waterloo Sunset, yeah, great song, um, great closing track, and of course this is a two disc pack which has both mono and stereo, so it comes in this big packaging here, so yeah, always nice. Okay, up next we have some Weezer, we have Pinkerton course Pinkerton's kind of an interesting album in their catalog because the first album was kind of your more very very conventional stuff but here uh, they definitely went for a more abrasive sound um, the guitars are more distorted um, very harsh of course lyrically like uh, Rivers I forgot his last name but Rivers yeah just really pouring all that raw motion out um, this is also a 2 CD pack Lots of bonus stuff on here. Um, you know, some of the lyrics are kind of a bit TMI. Like, okay, Rivers, like, don't reveal everything, man. Uh, but musically, pretty interesting. Definitely has a lo-fi quality to it as well. Um, very interesting stuff. Um, definitely, this definitely one I need to listen to it more because obviously you're not gonna appreciate it on the first listen because it's just so abrasive. But it's some interesting stuff it's not it's not for everyone i will say that it's not for everyone but i'm willing to give it some more listens okay now we have a really good album this possibly might be my favorite out of this whole batch we have some black sabbath mob rules of course the second and for a, for a period the last album with ronnie james dio on lead vocals before they would do another album in the 90s uh, but yeah, such a killer album. I mean, I think every song here is great. Um, also, yeah, on cover is pretty wild too. Uh, yeah, you have songs like Turn Up the Night. Great opening song. Great riff by Tony. Um, Voodoo, Sign of the Southern Cross. Uh, the title song, killer. It's absolutely killer. Um, Country Girl, um, Slipping Away over and over. And of course you have... Yeah, falling off the edge of the earth just again 
awesome album and disc two is a bunch of live bunch of live stuff um but yeah absolutely spectacular i don't, can't remember if i already showed the discs but here's what they look like let me just rotate them there you go yeah awesome all right and then i have one more album to talk about and that is and some of you might have seen this one coming because i did an unboxing video recently of course we have the rolling stones hackney diamonds all right so the mo the long anticipated album from this legendary band this is this is their first album in over 20 years almost 20 years like maybe 18 specifically of all new material uh, then again there was blue and lonesome which came out like 2016 i think but most people don't count that because that's mostly a covers out that's pretty much a covers album of blue songs but here is all new songs mostly uh produced by andrew watt you know and so was it worth the wait and i will say i think it was worth the wait very enjoyable i really enjoyed listening to this one i've listened to it a couple times um because yeah some really good stuff on here um of course it starts off with angry which was the first single on here and i think when i first heard angry i think i liked it but i didn't love it um but oh the more times i've heard it it's definitely grown on me more so yeah i think that's a good song then it goes on to get close which is a great follow-up song i really enjoyed the the, the chorus the chorus is like really good and that's something you can say for, for a lot of these songs the chorus is just great it's just so catchy and memorable um yeah i mean the song with the songwriting here is pretty pretty great um depending on you kind of slower acoustic number kind of bring it down a little bit but you know kind of need those like little little valley moments uh bite my head off <laughs> fun song and i believe that's the song with paul mccartney he is providing some bass and man the bass on the bass on there is so fuzzy fuzzy kind of very in your face very aggressive sounding you don't really hear that much from paul which is kind of funny um let's see dreamy skies is another one i liked mess it up mess it up that's the of course what's significant about mess it up of course that's one of the songs charlie charlie watts did before he passed away and yeah, you can definitely feel a difference in terms of the drumming. I mean, the drumming on this album is great, but yeah, when Charlie comes in, you know it's him. Uh, and that's a, Mess It Up is a great song. One of my favorites on this album, just so catchy, uh, very dancey, very dancey as well. But yeah, just so good. I really enjoy the guitar stuff on here. And Mick, Mick throughout this whole album, sounds great. I mean, he's, in, he's 80, I think. He's 80, I know he's in his 80s, but God, he still sounds really good here. Uh, but yeah, messed up. Great song. Live by the sword. Again, another one with Charlie on on the on voc on the on the drums. Um, but also you have Bill Wyman, their original bass player, guesting on this song, which is kind of nice uh, that they brought Bill into this one. That's that's nice. Um, then you have Sweet Sounds of Heaven featuring Lady Gaga, which to some people it's a turn off because some people hate Lady Gaga with all their might. Uh, but I think he does a stellar job on this track. And, you know, Rolling Stones always had female vocalists from time to time. And Lady Gaga is no exception. She's, I think she does really great here. Uh, I personally, I, I mean, I personally think this should have been the final song. But the, next, the last song, I kind of get why they, they included it. So the album closes off with, oh, by the way, before I continue, um, Sweet Sounds of Heaven also has Stevie Wonder providing some piano, which is good. And I know Elton John's also plays on a couple tracks. He provides some piano as well. He doesn't sing, by the way. Uh, neither does Stevie. Uh, but anyhow, back, back to what I was saying. So the album really closes off with a song called Rolling Stone Blues. And, you know, when, when I first heard it, it was like, okay, kind of a, you know, it's a blues cover. So... But this is a Muddy Waters song. And what's, of course, by the title of it, then, if you know the history of the Stones, then you know that that is the song that Brian Jones got their name from. Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. I think it was I think it was just called Rolling Stone, but I don't know why it has blue blues on there. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. But anyhow. But yeah, it's kind of, kind of nice they kind of brought a full circle to their beginnings, you know. 
So if this ends up being their final album, I think this would have this would be a good one to go out with. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how they go. Uh, they're getting really old, so we'll see. <laughs> but overall, very good album. All right. So there you have it. That's every CD I bought throughout the month of October. So as always, in the comments below, let me know what was some of your favorites out of this haul. And if you want to share what you bought this month, go on ahead. Uh, but overall, thank you so much for watching this pretty long video. If you liked it, again, like the video, subscribe if you are new. And of course, have a very happy Halloween. And I'll see you in the next video. So take care and goodbye for now.